Here we go again. This is Bobby Bliss from Overkill, and that's right, I'm in charge because I say so. And we're blowing it up on Capital Chaos TV. Stay tuned. Well, I would say with you, your band, that you can pick out albums from the early days, throw on Taking Over, and throw on something, and later I hear Black, and the new stuff or whatever, and it's going to sound different. But one thing about Overkill, I think, is when you hear it, it's, it's Overkill, right? And oh. the, 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 it changes from album to album a little bit, but there's something about it. It's just Overkill. And a big part of it is your voice and Dee Dee's bass, obviously. But No, we're Jersey guys. I mean, it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we understand business. <laughs> it's very simple. And business is branding. Right. And we understand how to make that brand. Charlie. And, <laughs> and, 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 and hey, Maiden had Eddie. We wanted Charlie. I mean, there's no big it's secret coolest. here. I'm not going to tell you anything different. But but I think the point is is understanding your brand and and sure diversity is okay but still coming out and branding it I mean there was a, there was a scene uh, in the scene between uh, you know the mid late 90s through mid 2005 six yeah. I mean this was a dirty word but that's one of my most proud eras I mean just because this wasn't easy didn't mean it wasn't worth it I mean you got to push through this stuff I mean I Didi and I and and the rest of the guys can go home and work for mom and dad you know and, and wonder why nobody understood our genius we we made it happen under all circumstances and that's that's the true test of metal you know or m-e-d-e-l uh but the uh but but i but i think that this band has always been identifiable and understand uh, understood how to uh, how to brand itself and continue to just march forward with albums and tours and no hiatus is really and i'm avoiding retired. i'm avoiding manual labor that's all this is <laughs> well we were we were talking about motorheads i wanted to ask you do you how do you see do you see yourself in lemmy's vein where you want to be like on stage till the end li almost literally like lemmy was playing shows right up to the end right pretty much yeah or do you see like uh at some point i maybe like take a step back and Maybe relax a little bit. Well, let's call this what it is, because I'm paying attention to this interview. I never compared us to Motorhead. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I never did. I've made all claims about <laughs> Overkill and Motorhead. So I'm not going to get tricked into that bullshit. <laughs> so let me tell you, I love this stuff, but the, uh, the idea of... Uh, I want to do it when I can compete, as we talked earlier. If I can't compete, I won't do it, I, and I'm I'm okay with that. I uh, it, it's just that simple, and that's only for me. That's not to compare it to anyone else. If I continue to enjoy it and can physically do it, um, then for me, it's something worthwhile. If I can't enjoy it and can't physically do it, then I would know that it's time to to gracefully bow out or disappear like a ghost. It's it, it's not a big deal one way or the other to me. Gotcha. I was thinking, what would uh, if. Uh Bobby, maybe you weren't Blitz back then. Bobby Ellsworth from like '81 met Bobby Ellsworth from right now that I'm talking to. What would yeah. he say? What would he say? What would he think? Oh, jeez, he would have said. First of all, he would have said, "Give up the cigarettes earlier." He would have said, uh, "He said maybe you should have got your law degree." <laughs> <laughs> but he also would he be surprised that you were still playing Overkill shit 37 years later? I think, he, I think he would have gave me a hug and said, "We could never have believed this, could we?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah um early influences what was like some of the when you were uh, i know you guys played a lot of cover songs in the early days right mm -hmm. so what were some of like your favorite songs that you like to play i, mean, I think you mentioned a couple earlier just yeah. some motorhead stuff and we had the motorhead in there we had some ramones we had the dead boys a sex pistol show would show up occasionally that you know there was some most of the punk rock or the rock and roll but then you know the metal stuff was uh uh, Sa Sabbath with Dio. We did uh, Riot. We would throw some Scorpions in. Uh, obviously, Iron Maiden. A whole bunch of Judas Priest. So it was really traditional into the new wave of British heavy metal. Uh, we weren't covering bands like Angel Witch or Tank because they were just kind of brand new bands, right. and we were kind of writing simultaneously or on the back end of that stuff. So we were taking more of the tr traditional stuff. We were digging in deep on uh, on Sad Wings of Destiny, on Stained Class, on the first two Maiden records. Swords and Tequila with Riot, uh, oh God, another piece of meat by the Scorpions, you know, so, Late but we were doing them with our kind of thing, you know, it was double bass, it wasn't learning each part, it was kind of, you know, take that and make it your own. Cool. Um, I think that's all I had for you tonight, Bobby. You've been great. You've been wonderful. And I avoided that trap. Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs>
Um, <laughs> anything else you want to add to uh, your fans on Capital Cast TV? Well, it's good to be in San Francisco. Good to be on Capital Cast TV. Good to be still grinding the grinding wheel. We'll see you on Capital Cast. Later. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Yeah, man. Awesome.